Hi there, in this video we're going to be looking at something called Monks, which is state management for Moon.js. So it's easier than you think, and of course state management is always a scary word, so let's jump in by making a new directory called Moon-Monks. Inside of here I want to make an index.html and also an app.js. We'll then open this up inside of our editor and run this inside of HTTP server. So let's start off inside of our index.html and we can make a new HTML file by saying HTML colon 5. I'll change the title to be moon.js monks. And inside of our body, we need to make a div with the ID of app. This is where we'll be mounting our moon instance. Next, we want to import development mode moon. And that comes from unpackage.com slash moon.js slash dist slash moon.js. So that allows us to use moon.js inside of our application. We then want to import monks and that comes from unpackage once again, but this time simply slash monks. The final thing that we need to do is our app.js. And that's simply our moon application. So now that we have all of that, we can head over to app.js. And the first thing I'd like to do is tell moon we're using monks and in order to tell moon we can use moon.use and as we have monks in the global scope we can use monks next we need to create a store so we can say const store is equal to in new monks and inside of our store we need to define what our state looks like I'm simply going to make a counter in which we can either increment or decrement a counter by one. So our state will contain a counter and that will be by default number one. Then we can define some actions. So the actions are simply a function that contains the state and a payload. So if you imagine our current state dot counter would be one. And if we want to increment that by a number, we would pass through one to this function and that would be our payload. So what we would say is state.counter plus equal the payload. So when we call this action in the future, we're simply going to be saying increment one. That will all make sense in a second, but let's make the same for decrement. That includes the state and the payload once again. So we can set the counter this time to minus equal the payload. And that's it for our actions. So we don't need to create any other actions at this point, but you may want to add other actions into your store inside of this actions object. So the next thing to do is to define a new moon instance. And we'll put that equal to app. And inside of our moon instance, I'm going to make the elements equal to app, and that's the ID of app. And if we look at our index.html, you can see that we have the div ID of app here. Next, we can tell this instance that we want to use the store. And that comes from the store, which we created here, which is a new monks. And inside of our moon instance, I want to create a template. Perhaps we can have a div with a h1 and the h1 will contain our store.state.counter and if we take a look at our store we can see that we have our store here, our state which then contains our counter variable. So initially that's going to be one so we can say counter colon and underneath we can have two buttons. The first button can say increment and the second button can say decrement. Each one of these 
can have an onClick instance by using m-on colon click and we can say equals increment and equals decrement. So far though, we have no function called increment and no function called decrement inside of this moon instance. We do have these things as actions inside of the store, but what we have to do is create some methods. So the methods, I'm going to create an increment and also a decrement. But instead of interacting with the data inside of this instance, what I'm going to do is call a particular action. So we can say store.dispatch. And what this does is it allows us to pass through a name of the action, for example, increment, and then a payload. So if we wanted to increment by one, we would simply say one here. We could dispatch another action for decrement and do the same by one. What I like to do in circumstances like this is just to make sure that I'm not making any typos. I like to create a actions, which I can hold as an object. So for example, we would have increment as increment and this is case sensitive because we are calling that function or rather calling that action. So then we could simply say actions dot increment and actions dot decrement. So once we save our file and we take a look inside of the browser, we now have our counter. We can use increment to increment this upwards or decrement to take this back down to zero or even go into the minuses. So this is how we could use the store inside of our moon applications and also how we can fire actions off, how we can return a new version of our state, as well as ensure that we don't have any typos when we're calling our actions. So this is when we're dispatching our actions instead of using the string, we are then dispatching this object. We aren't limited to what we can pass through here. So if we had a object that we passed through as a payload, we could have number equals to one. And instead we'd have to change our increment to be payload dot number. So if we refresh this, we get the same. Our counter would go up. And we could even console.log the payload. So we could see this inside of the console. You'll notice now if we hit increment, we do just get simply that number, which is one. We could do the same for state. And if we refresh the page, we could see that currently we have counter, which allows us to get and set the state. So in this video, we've taken a look at how we can use monks inside of our moon applications. We've created a store. We now have state objects and we could hold as many objects as we wanted in our state. We have actions that when dispatched, we can create a new version of our state. We've also injected our store into our moon instance, and we can see the results of that by binding to our store.state.counter. Inside of our moon instance, we're dispatching the actions, and we've used an object to ensure type safety to a certain degree as we could certainly mistype our strings. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. And of course, check out paulhalliday.io for more free content and premium courses. Until next time, I'll see you soon in that next video.